Alright, I'm live. Cool. One thing I noticed looking back at the VODs is that the quality of my um, streams is pretty low. I don't know why it is, because I thought I had set it to go to like 1080p, but it just looks really bad <laughs> when I look back at the VODs. I, I don't know what's going on, but anyway, we're going to begin. We're going to start looking into fetch, which is what I said I'd do last time, because I think I ruled out pure script routing as something that I necessarily need. Uh, I mean, it's something that I might consider later on, but as far as I know, for like a simple randomizer, for a very basic uh, single-page application, I, I, I just don't know if I even need to have like any kind of routing logic at all on the in, on the client side, anyway. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh. Before I actually dive into this, I just want to say, like, LangJam, look, it, it, it's, it's basically um, a weekend coding jam. It's like, it's like a game jam, and apparently they even have, like, a theme, and you get to create a programming language based on that theme. Like, this is, this is dope. <laughs> this is, this is really awesome, like. I'd participate if it wasn't in, like, an awful time zone and, yeah, I actually, you know, knew a bit more about making languages and had someone to work with, that sort of thing, but, yeah, this is, this is really cool. Someone posted this on the, uh, the Idris Slack, and I was just like, wow, this is, this is a really cool idea. I don't know, I just felt like sharing this. I, I, I just wanted to share how awesome I think this idea is, because it's, it's, it, it's just like a game jam. It's just like a, a, a little game jam, but like you're building a, a programming language instead. Like that's that's freaking rad. All right, but we're gonna move on. We gotta dive right into our fetch research here because otherwise I'm gonna spend all day talking about other stuff, and I don't want to do that. Uh, this so post, I found it to be pretty interesting because it um. Yeah, it pretty much confirms, or at least it, it doesn't confirm it, but, like, reinforces my idea that I don't need to have a separate server for the front end um, versus just the back end server, because they have, like, this fetch API slash sample data thing going on here without having to specify, like, a completely different host. So... Feeling pretty good about that, although they don't say anything about proxying here, obviously, because this question is not about, you know, setting up um, communication between the front end and back end. So, I don't actually have any clues towards that. I don't know any more about whether or not I need to, you know, have set some kind of proxy setting like they do in React. I have a strong feeling I probably will, but. I mean, we'll see. We're, we're going to be messing around with this today. Hopefully we get somewhere. I think the first thing I want to do, actually, is look into getting um, getting some kind of equivalent for PureScript uh, for Fetch. Because Fetch, Fetch is a JavaScript API, and I have no idea how I can even call that from PureScript. I mean, I know PureScript has FFI, but... There's almost no way that someone hasn't made some kind of, like, at least thin layer of bindings around the JavaScript API uh, in PureScript already. So we're going to go straight to pure, uh, Pursuit. We're going to look up Fetch. Uh, we've got Fetch from PureScript Milkies? Milkis? Milkies? Is that like milk? PureScript library for working with fetch for HTTP requests. Okay, well, it sounds like that's what we want. Oh. Named for the greatest soft drink of all time. Milk, milk keys. Mil milkus? What, what is this? <laughs> Forgive me, I'm going to go on a tangent. Oh, it's Korean. Okay. Yeah, it's like, I've never heard of this before. I bet you could find this at like TNT or something. Soft drink... Produced by Lot Chilsung? I don't know. <laughs> I'm butchering that. 
Uh, it combines many of the common elements of traditional carbonated beverages, such as sugar, carbonated water, with milk? Milk? So, wait a minute. I've, I've actually heard about this. Yeah, I've, I've heard about these, like, milk sodas. I was just like, that sounds so weird, but yeah, I... I think I was watching, like, another streamer or YouTuber, and they were talking about it, and, like, yeah, somebody, like, he went to, like, New York, or, like, no, he lives in New York, and he went to, like, some, uh, local, like, Japanese, uh, shop there, and they, they were selling, like, milk soda beverage things, and I was just like, what? That sounds so weird. And, like, wouldn't you know it? Suddenly, Pierce Script points me towards <laughs> milk beverages, like, milk soda beverages, anyway. Obviously, milk is a. It, 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 does does milk count as a beverage? Would you count that as a beverage? I I think it counts as a beverage, right? Wait, I don't have my chat open. What am I doing? Ah, ah. Okay, you know, I'll just click that and then I'll just drink that. There we go. Just fix the stream setup a bit here. All right, en enough uh, milkies, milkies. So this is a library for working with the Fetch API, both in the browser and on Node via Node Fetch. Okay, didn't know about this distinction, so it's good to be aware of that. This is so weird. Why would you call it PureScript milkies? Like, can't. Uh, wouldn't you just call it peer script fetch or something? Or at least something related to the word fetch so that it's not, you know, confusing? <laughs> and I don't have to come to the repo and look at, uh, look at the name to understand what is going on? Because uh, there's so many um, libraries on Pursuit that just don't do that. They're, they, like, they, they just make sense. Like, I guess halogen doesn't really say much about halogen. So... I, I suppose this is fair, but like, I don't know, there's uh, so many libraries on per, per, on Pursuit that just have a name that kind of describes what that package does, so. Okay, so here's a guide. Here's an example usage. Oh god, they also have tests for this. Installation instructions. YT casts project to, in order to download HTML from a YouTube page. Okay, that sounds pretty interesting. Relevant because I'm on YouTube. Uh, okay, so here's the fetch call. Fetch. They give it a URL. Default fetch options. Okay, that must be something they import. Oh, and they do like a reverse bind. That's cute. I don't know why I hi highlighted the text. I actually meant to highlight this operator. So this is just the bind operator, but backwards. So it's basically just, you know, you, you, you can swap the left side with the right side. And that's what they were going for. So, text. I, I take it that text is a function. Probably takes the result of the fetch and turns it into whatever monad we're in. Aff, apparently. So, this is asynchronous. Which means that it does this stuff first. And then it awaits the result here. Because this is not, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is not like an applicative do. I'm, I'm, I think they have like an a do notation specifically for applicatives. So this, uh, these operations won't be run in parallel. So this will asynchronously fetch this stuff first. And then, well, I guess not really asynchronously at that point. Because, you know, you're, you're just awaiting it here. And then you process the result after that. Okay. I imagine that the fetch API is asynchronous. 
So, we'll probably have to keep looking into that. Fetch impulse. Window and node. Okay, that's interesting. You can partially apply the function milkies.fetch to get a value of fetch. You know, considering this is a Korean drink, I should ask Adam if he's ever heard of these. I bet Adam's heard of Milkies before. Node fetch. I don't really know what this is. <laughs> I, I have no idea what they're talking about here. Yeah, I, I don't know what the fetch impulse is for. Fetch is simply a type alias. Okay. Some type of, kind of a low level definition. But I don't know. I'll, I'll read it. I'll give it a chance. Maybe I'll understand it. Variables. Type variables option in trash. Okay, so the union options and trash together to perform to, to form options. That's okay. And he has a link to his blog, apparently. Got it. How using fetch works. So you have to create a URL. What is M in this context? They haven't uh, shown us the imports. Oh, M dot default fetch options. Is it Milky's? Because there's no M in front of fetch. Hmm. Could be a little clearer, I think. Oh yeah, this just does aft dot attempt. Okay, I, I'm gonna need to learn more about async. Pure script, as I'm not familiar with aft.attempt at all. Although I understand the general mechanism uh, under un underpinning aft, because as, as far as I know, aft should work pretty similarly to like a future. I mean, it is a monad. confusing now. Type level stuff. Hmm. 
Anytime I see type level programming outside of a language that actually supports dependent types, like Idris, for example, I, I, like every time I see type level stuff, I always, I always think it's like kind of hacky. You know, it's, it's like you you really wish you had types that actually depend on values, but you just don't. So you're just like emulating it with types, and it, and it becomes pretty ugly usually. I don't know. Just a random thought that I had. So, I guess I'll just try it, right? Like, there's no harm in trying fetch. I kind of wish this opened in a new tab. I guess I could have just done this. I was to say, Milky's is a really weird name. Pure script Calpus. Oh boy. What's Pure Script Kelp? Oh, it's it's by the same person. Go figure. Experimental fork of Milky's using Bonjiri is. Okay, I think that's actually supposed to be Japanese. So in that case, I definitely butchered that. I don't think I want this library. <laughs> it seems a lot more experimental. But what is what is this? Oh, yet another library by the same person. Of course. <laughs> Go figure. Working with JS promises via specifications. Okay. Huh. That is interesting. These may not work correctly. Okay, yeah. This, this stuff doesn't seem like it's particularly... Um, well thought out or fleshed out, I guess. Yeah, like four stars, five stars. How many does this have, though? This has like 43. That's pretty good, I'd say. I don't really want to look at Kelpis. Kelpies? I, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Fetch from PeerScript Workers. It's Fetch from PeerScript Paxel. This is one thing I... I don't know, like... Pursuit is an interesting system, but it's like a global search. I don't know if there's a way to like narrow your search down to within like a certain package, or does it just, you know, search for a certain package with a certain functionality or name? Because like this just gives you like, everything named fetch, <laughs> whether it be like a method or a module or like, yeah, like er everything that has the word fetch in it is just a result. It doesn't matter which library it's from, it's just everything. Oh, okay, that is the name. <laughs> Fetch with string, object, string, object, string, string, boolean, 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 boolean. script Google Apps. Hmm. Yeah, that's a... I think they might have been wanting something here. <laughs> So they could avoid naming it that way, but yeah, that's what they ended up with, I guess. What is PureScript Paxel? Do I want to know? I guess I should. I should learn just in case. Hey, wait, there's a library called PureScript Fetch. Fetch ALA or Fetch ALA? Computation that fetches data for some key using some wrapping resource. I don't know what that means. Fetch fun. You know, let's, let's check this out. More efficient data fetching using deduplication, batching, and caching. Right fold. Peer fetch. Like, this is the kind of name I originally expected to see. 
Hmm, okay. Deduplication of fetches. Okay. This does not sound at all like what I'm looking for, so I'm just going to ignore that. We're going to look into Pure Script Paxel and see what this is. By a different person. Like Haxel except Pure Script. This is meant to be a Pure Script translation of Haxel using row types to constrain the number of data sources available to use. Alright, what is Haxel? Is a layer that sits between application code and one or more data sources. Okay, so this is like uh, almost like connector code. I've worked with data sources before in the context of you know writing like data connectors and stuff. So I kind of see what's going on here, and I am pretty darn sure this is not what I'm looking for. Also, it's a Facebook project apparently. Okay. I mean, React's a Facebook project, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised that they have a lot of presence in the web development space. <laughs> oh, IDK, that's a, that's a pretty cool to do. I Sometimes I feel like that too, you know? Alright, we're gonna just go with Milkies, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I can't say that name and, like, take it seriously. It just sounds so ridiculous. He must have just explicitly imported fetch. There's no way. Like, you can see there's a text function here. Like, all those other functions that were prefixed with an M, I think they're in here. I'm pretty darn sure they're in here. And if they're in here, then that probably means he just imported fetch separately for whatever reason. He, I don't know. Didn't want to include the M dot in front of fetch. Okay. That's good, I think. What was I? Oh yeah, I was, that's right. So I was just messing around with Nix earlier today, and my god. Wait, do I even have the... I, I don't think I have it anymore. I don't know what I was trying to do. But yeah, I, I have NeoVim in my home manager now. I also still have Vim. I didn't change anything. I don't know what I'm trying to do here. That was silly. Do I have it in this history? Yeah, I do. I was trying to set up my home manager to include NeoVim because I realized that I what I said last stream was completely wrong. Because I, I looked it up and NeoVim apparently uh, has a 0 0.5 release that is stable. So you actually do get the built-in LSP config. or the, Well, not config, but the, the built-in LSP support. Um, with the NeoVim package. Like, I actually saw like when I was downloading the packages, it was downloading NeoVim 0 0.5, which is the right version. And yet, <laughs> and yet, I put all this stuff here, and it doesn't work. I'm thinking, like, really? Because, like, Vim, I just, I mean, this is a little bit more painful, because I have to add this, but at least it works. Right? All I had to do was add Rust Analyzer to like my home packages. Or at least it did work at some point with Rust Analyzer. I don't know uh, why it's not working right now. It, I tested it on a NixOS machine and it did work. I don't know why it's not working here. Uh, I still need to look into that. But yeah, this was working a lot better than this NeoVim setup. So that's weird. It's really weird. I don't know why this doesn't work. And it's just one of those those Nix things. It's just like, sometimes Nix is amazing and you're like, wow, this is so good. Everything just works and it's nice. And then there are other times where you're just like, you look up something, you can't find any documentation on it at all. Sometimes people just point you directly at like source code <laughs> for like a Nix derivation. And they're like, yeah, this is the documentation. Just read the, the just read the Nix source code. There you go. <laughs> it's kind of silly. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been trying to 
switch to NeoVim, and I haven't had any success, so today we're not going to be using NeoVim. We're just going to be using uh, regular old Vim. And I thought that was a message in chat, but no, it's just that the chat disconnected. Cool. Very happy. Very, very, very happy to see that. Uh, so yeah, uh... I might as well go get my flakes shell thing. Into that environment so I can actually use my X flakes. Man, these days I've actually kind of been wanting to do more stuff with uh, with Idris. I've got a lot of cool ideas for like stuff to experiment with in Idris, but like, yeah, I I, I run a Rust meetup. <laughs> I run a Rust meetup. I I kind of I'm a little bit more obligated to do stuff with Rust. And I'm building this project in Rust, so I'm just like, well. I would have built this in Idris if I felt confident that I could use Idris to build an actual, like, working web application, but I don't know, they still haven't fixed their, um, package management uh, situation yet, so I, I still don't know, like, what you're supposed to use to download all the dependencies you need and everything and have it all just work. It's kind of, a uh, kind of disappointing, I have to say. And of course, there's still that split between Idris 1 and Idris 2, which kind of sucks. Cause there, there's by far, like, way more Idris 1 packages than Idris 2. Or at least that was the case for a while. I don't know how it is today. It could be different. Uh, am I, am I... Am I doing what I think I'm doing? No, I'm not... I'm not even in the right place. I need to go to the prototype. I don't know, I'm feeling kind of tired today. I don't know why. I might end stream a little early. Depends. Oh yeah, I need milkies. Let's do spago install milkies. No such file or directory. Well, that's cool. I guess we can just try to try to use it and then see what happens. Cause I I don't know. Uh, no, that's not what I want to do. I want to I want to vim that. Yeah, I just kind of feel tired today. It's weird. I, I really wish Windows didn't make those annoying sounds every time I tried to scroll past the end of the file or whatever. Ugh. So this is what we do when we get a link A in the URL. So we modify the history, we add that to their list. Of, okay. So this is a good place to insert arbitrary side effects, I guess. And in this case, I want to do a fetch. So to do that, I'm going to do an m.fetch because I'm going to actually prefix mine. Import uh, I guess it's just milkies. Yeah, I think it's just import milkies because they don't seem to have this stuff in a submodule. So we're gonna import milkies. M. And there we go. So I should be able to do an m.fetch here. Oh, wait a minute. If I have an asynchronous 
effect. Is there a way I can run it and convert it into a regular synchronous effect? Uh, that's a good question. I have no idea. If, if this works like futures in Rust, then maybe not. Maybe like an unsafe run. Ah, I'm not like a huge fan of that idea. I don't need this. I don't care about that. What was I going to look for? Pursuit. I guess we can do this. I kind of want to keep that other pursuit open for Milkies. Because this is the library that we will be using. Okay, so they have like a post method and a put method, a get method. I can also just use regular old fetch. Yeah, this might take a couple streams, or I might not. Um, I might not finish this this sprint. Depends on how I'm feeling. Depends on how things go. Run AF, here we go. I think. Effect fiber unit? Forks and. An effect context. Oh. I don't know if I can actually convert this into a regular effect then. I mean, that's what the signature suggests here though. Hmm, this is what it runs when it completes. Returns the pending fiber. I think that's what we want, then. I do think that's what we want. brackets here even in case we have to do resource cleanup I don't know if we do because I'm, I'm imagining that fetch probably cleans up its own resources I don't remember them doing it wait they, they gave examples of how to use milkies what am I doing I could just follow the examples okay so this program is just asynchronous so never mind yeah I, I was just looking at that I, I don't know why I thought hmm. or I could convert the synchronous effects into an asynchronous effect ooh that's an idea so we can go from regular effect to af and that would probably work I don't think there'd be any issues with that. I don't know if that's like a best practice though. Cause like those things don't need to be asynchronous, but this does, so. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what's really best practice here. I guess I'll just go with it, because that's all I can think of at the moment. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to make bad decisions along the way. It happens. Software rarely ever is perfect. Is 
That doesn't mean I have to make this. This is not wrapped in effect. So this do notation is actually kind of confusing. I imagine that... No, no, I'm stupid. Our monad is halogen M. Yeah, we're in the halogen M monad. I have to convert... Ha oh. Oh god. <laughs> Ooh. Maybe there's like a... I should look into halogen M and see if it can take this uh, asynchronous function and turn it into like a synchronous thing. I don't know. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, can I dupe this first, maybe? Yeah, let's just dupe that. Uh, I'm already at the top on this tab. We'll just use this one. Halogen M. Oh, this one, I think. Well, I don't want parallel evaluation. I just want to go from an F monad to a halogen M monad. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Okay, maybe not arbitrary effects here. Uh, but they have like a lift IO or something, right? I'm pretty sure. At least I thought they did. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I actually never logged anything from here, but that's that's weird. There's got to be a way to do this. I'm, 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 I'm so sure of that. Uh... Oh, wait. Where was my... Uh, didn't I have a tab with the... It's not this. That's, that's just the, this page. I guess I don't. I thought I had a tab with, like, the book open or something, but I guess not. Uh, let's look for the book. Performing effects. Here we go. Often called the eval monad, okay. Oh. I think this is our answer. We we want effect here. No, wait, this is the effect unit. Kind of like what we what they did with the um maybe. Or it could be af. Hmm. Oh. What? How many arguments are there? It's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fascinating. Oh wait, as, no, this is this is a type constructor. I'm sorry. Yeah, otherwise it'd be parentheses. So oh, okay, so this is five, this is six. 
Yeah, I'm, I, I don't know why. I, I, I inserted parentheses around F and unit in my head. That's definitely not right. That doesn't make sense. So here we have for all and then M. I wonder if I can just delete this and replace it with F. When you choose a monad for your component, it will show up in your halogen M type. Your comp component type. Oh, okay. So I think that's this. So this also needs to be F. I I don't know how I jumped down there. F. I mean that that's what they said. This is probably F as well. Which means we can get rid of this. And this. There we go. Alright. Well, uh, I guess we need to make a URL, don't we? Because that's what they do in their example for mill keys. Wait, do I have two mill keys tabs open? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Oops. I guess I only need one. So fetch URL. So this is interesting. I guess I want something like this. Uh, I can't do that. I need to right click to paste that. Good. It sucks that I don't have syntax highlighting here because I don't have like a peer script LSP or anything installed. I could probably spend some time to look into that, but I just don't feel like it right now. And I still haven't looked into the Spago stuff because I, I just don't have time for that. I guess we can just go with like uh, slash API slash Foo. And then we can try and return something. And see if that works. That would at least confirm that fetch does what I think it's supposed to do. I guess we can just throw away the result. Maybe not. Maybe I maybe I actually want the result though. Uh, it's an either. Yeah, we don't. We definitely don't want to ignore that. Whoa, whoops! Did not want to press that button. Uh, oh boy. Oh wait, no. I I need to bind it right. I don't, know, I don't know if I need that uh, attempt thing, but I, I guess I can add it. Shouldn't uh, shouldn't hurt. Wait, this is in the handle query. I want to be able to do this if I like click a button or something. I probably need to change my uh, render thing here to add something like that. 
Yeah, I need to have like some kind of handle action or whatever. But I guess this is okay too. I mean, as long as it communicates with the back end, I should be okay with that. Do I wait? Do I have the ability to log? No. Don't you just love it when the prelude is so lean that you have to import like basically everything, <laughs> and then you have to remember or look up every single time what uh, you need to import exactly? Oh god, god. Uh, give me, give me another one of these pursuit tabs. We're gonna look up log. I mean, once you know how to use pursuit, it's not that bad having everything in one place like this and having it show everything and not being able to, you know, filter for specific packages and stuff, but it's still annoying. Like, it, it, I, I'm okay with navigating this thing, but I feel like it would be, like, so much better. Alright, we've got log. Log. Uh, oh no. Or, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. I'll uh, bring back some old, like, early 2000s internet humor. Um, you know what? I actually am not even using any of this, so this is fine, I guess. Maybe I should print the error itself, come to think of it. Assuming that it's a string. Yeah, I have no idea what it is. Hopefully it's a string. And if not, then I can always just... Alright, there we go. Uh, or at least I would... I would hope I could do something like this, but obviously I can't actually do this because I'm in the wrong monad. I'm in two different monads here. This one's AF and this one's IO. Or I mean, sorry, not IO. Effect. I'll never get used to that. <laughs> I will never get used to that. I'm just so used to calling it IO from Haskell. And I guess CATS. Because CATS has IO now, I think, in Scala land. That can be a new movie title, Scala Land. And they'll give the award to the wrong person. How do I thing? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to remember what I'm doing here. Man, I'm, I'm just really out of it. Did I close it? There's no way I closed it, right? Don't tell me I closed it. No, no, it's it's open in a in, in GitHub, though. I didn't actually look at the book. H.lift effect.
So what does random do? Oh, it comes from effect dot random. So yeah, that that does return effect. H dot lift effect. Can we look that up? Uh, should be in here actually. Lift effect. It's not here. Okay, it's very specifically lifting in effect. Oh, but we have lift aft. Okay, so we have lift effect and lift aft. That's actually really good. We have both of them. We need to do that. Probably need to like show the error, in fact. So I'm gonna do that. It's gonna preemptively do a show on that. We'll do an H dot lift F. There we go. That should be nice and uniform now. All the monads match. I could have done the H dot lift effect outside of this, come to think of it, and that probably could have saved me a bit of trouble. I think I'm gonna do that. A bit of code repetition there. Uh, yeah, we want that. I think that's good. Um. I think we want to do a next develop actually, if I haven't already done that. Did I? I actually don't remember. I can't scroll up. What? How do I how do how do I scroll? I want I wanna see what I did. I'm not in Tmux, right? I can I I don't think control B is gonna do anything for me, no. Uh Uh, according to the history, I've run some kind of next develop at some point, so I guess I can assume that I'm in. Oh no, yeah, I'm in, because I, I, I did the spago and it recognized spago, so that's fine. Um, bundle app, I guess. Wait, actually, I want to set up the endpoint on the other side first. This RLS thing is going to drive me crazy. Because I was thinking I could just, you know, ignore fixing that and just use NeoVim with its built-in LSP support, but apparently it's not so simple. It doesn't just work that way. Which is really, really disappointing. I was really hoping that I would have, like, an easy way out with Nix. And when I read posts on Reddit from people who have used Nix with NeoVim and have set up like LSP, they, they are all like, yeah, it's so easy. In, in Nix, I can just, you know, throw it into like home manager and it's just like, ah, it all just works. And you know, I'm just sitting here like, yeah, I, I don't even know how to use the damn thing. So, uh, yay. Good, good, good. It w would be nice if those people who, you know, actually knew how to do this kind of elaborated a bit and explained how, how, how to set this stuff up, but they don't. Uh, I was looking at Rocket, right? I want to see how to set the path. You know what? We'll just do this for now. Is API uh, foo?
Yeah, I can't display Unicode characters in Vim unless I add some kind of plugin, I'm sure. Probably should add that so I can actually view that emoji. Age and name. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. We're not taking that. I'm just going to say hello. <laughs> I think that makes sense. Return a string that says hello. I don't even know if this is... Um, going to do anything. Oh. The weather is now 25 degrees Celsius. Smoke. Smoke. crazy how fast it dropped from like 31 degrees to suddenly 25. That's insane. Yeah, I guess I'm good with this. I, I don't know. I I hope this works. I really do. But I'm not sure. I have my doubts. Uh, what do we want here? I could set up some shortcuts for like changing directories through like environment variables. Like, just inside of the Nix shell that I'm using for um, Nix develop. That would be pretty cool. Then I don't have to, like, set that globally or anything for my user. That can just be very specific to this project. That would be cool. Might be worth a try. Because navigation is kind of annoying right now. If I want to, like, go to the front-end project, I don't have like an easy shortcut to that. I just have to CD up a couple levels and then see down. Like I, I, I've seen projects where it's just it's way worse with that because of you know Java, um, Java conventions where they have the where they do that like com dot foo dot com or whatever or dot www dot uh, you know they have those like huge long names and a whole bunch of like directory levels it's I don't know it's, it's ridiculous in those cases like you basically have to have aliases for navigation because it's it, it's like impossible to get around without wanting to tear your hair out or maybe you're like a Linux power user or something you know how to navigate really fast. I don't know. I'm not. I'm a noob. Uh, so Spaggle Bundle App. Yeah, we're gonna try Spaggle Bundle App. Wait, I don't... What are you talking about? This was... This was wasn't this working? This I thought this was working at one point, because I definitely have done... What? No such file or directory. Wait, I wasn't in my Nix develop. Then no wonder I was trying to use Spago and it wasn't working. It was using the Spago that. Uh, wait. No, no such file or directory. What? Cargo. No, I don't have cargo. But it says I... It says I have Spago? Oh. That seems weird. I don't think I should have Spago. <laughs> I'm pretty sure... Hmm... I'm pretty sure it installed Spago globally, somehow. <laughs> Even though I'm using Spago in like a Nix shell. 
That seems a little bit weird. But maybe it has no choice. Maybe it, it has to do that. Can I... How do I see what I've installed? Nix list installed packages. Are you serious? I'm going to try this one because it seems nice and easy. I doubt that this is... Yeah, no. I have Home Manager and Nix, but I don't have any other Nix packages installed. So the fact that it says I have Spago is almost certainly because it installed Spago globally and isn't considered like a Nix dependency. That's interesting. That's good to know. Good to know. I wonder if there's a way to avoid that. Because it would be nice if it didn't, like, pollute my base system with stuff, but, uh... But I don't know. Wait, I can't Nix develop this. I have a shell.nix. I don't have a Nix flake for this prototype. Why would I make a Nix flake for a prototype? This adds... Bago is a dependency. Okay. Oops. Okay. Yeah, that that seems to work a lot better. Oh, I have to import ah ah ah. This is the PeerScript development experience, by the way. <laughs> it's like every little thing has to be imported because they don't want to provide a whole bunch of stuff in the prelude. Oh my god. I guess they just wanted to avoid like namespace clashes or something. I don't know. It might be an artifact of how Haskell's uh, module system works. I, I, I imagine that it's somewhat similar in Haskell at least. I think? I actually don't know about that. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that I can just use out of the box in Haskell, though, too. So I'm not, I'm not really sure. Again, I haven't done like a ton of stuff with Haskell and Peer Script yet, which is why I'm working on this project to try and get more familiar with it. But it's not, uh, it's not something that I've really become well practiced in yet. go back up a level and then do the Spago bundle app. Error. Unknown module F. Okay. Why? Oh, do I need to import like Hmm. Annoying. 
Very annoying. Yeah, I think I need to do that because it is a monad. What? Line 47. Okay, understood. I should just use attempt, apparently, instead of just doing this. Why not? Now for the rest of the errors. Unknown data constructor left. Oh my god, you have got to be kidding. That for sure is part of like, the prelude and... Uh, in Haskell, like you don't have to import either's. I'm, sh I'm sure of that. I'm so sure of that. I guess we're looking up left and right. PureScript either, yeah, it's its own separate package. PureScript either, in case you need either's, in case you need like a basic sum type for error handling. In case you need any error handling at all in your application, please download a separate library. <laughs> if you don't need to handle errors in your application ever at all, then you don't need this dependency. But if your application ever needs to do any kind of error handling, make sure you add this, you, 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 you make sure you install this dependency. Under the the, the the rare case where you might actually have to handle errors. Oh my god. Data to either. Oh, okay. Just give me left and right. And I don't know if I need to You know what? I'm just going to import either. Because I'm pretty sure those are... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I need to do. Bring on the errors. Could not match type URL with type fetch impl. What? I'm just following your dumb example. <laughs> Your example said to use this, so that's what I'm doing. That's line 48. Well, I know what line that is. It's pretty obvious. Okay. So it doesn't like this, apparently. Good to know. Good to know. Fetch. So this is unwrapping a URL. But there's one that creates a URL too. This one. Ah, that's, that's really confusing. So maybe I don't actually want that? Why is there a difference? Why, why is it doing this? Do I want to get rid of that? Is that a mistake in the documentation, or...? Ah... Poop. I guess they impulled fe fetch impul, or whatever. Or maybe I need to import fetch impul? Let me go look up fetch impl. Uh, milkies. Fetch impl. What are you? Where do you come from? Milkies impl. 
and it's just this. So it's just a type. It's just an empty, uh, Foreign import data. Oh, is this... Uh, I have to create my own fetch impul? I guess I can try that? That seems really weird. Like, this seems like a really weird way of, of doing what I imagine is some kind of, like, IOC. Like, they didn't want to be tied to a particular fetch implementation, but they wanted to be able to have to write an API against a fetch impl. I would have expected at least, like... Well, I guess you can't really use it like a... Well, maybe you could use it like a type class. You could add like a type class constraint here for implements fetch impl. Yeah, I don't know. This seems a little bit roundabout. to do. I'll, I'll try and create a fetch impul, I guess. Type fetch impul equals string is... I, I guess that's what I... I guess that's what they want. wonder if that'll work. Maybe it won't. Nah. Okay, I don't know how this works. I'm tired. I want to go exercise. I'm going to end stream right now, and we'll try and pick this up uh, next time. Maybe I'll work on this a bit tomorrow or on Saturday or something. I don't know. Just on my own time. But yeah, this is not, uh, this is not working for me. So hopefully we'll be able to wrap this up, this sprint. If we don't, I guess that's okay. We did, we did finish one task this sprint at least. It was a shorter sprint. It was like a shortened, really tiny sprint. So you know what? I'm going to say that's actually okay for this um, second, or, well, for this, like, half sprint that we're doing. Uh, yeah, ending stream.